Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, great time. How are you? Wow, you can see the uh, light of the prayers on the eyes, at the eyes. It's so, so beautiful to see that and to continue and to do and to create lots of great things. Once, you know, when I was a child, I thought it's so great sometimes to uh, try to get up to the sky to play on the clouds because they show us that you can in the in the in the uh, uh, Mickey Mouse and so on you can jump there and it will hold you. This is, was my dream, and just now I I, I spoke with uh, uh, Halima, and uh, she told me that the clouds so beautiful and uh, in in Seattle and so great. Um, uh, and what happened there? I tried all the time not to try how you can play on the cloud clouds. I tried to find the way to get there. This is the most important thing, how to get there. And I asked my father, my, my mother, my grandpa, my grandma, how to get there. They say, it's very impossible. I didn't believe. I say, no, we can get there. When I begin to realize i'm not sure if i'm realizing or not now but when i began to realize that the way is so high then we need to find a different way to get there to get there to be there to sleep there and to think and one night i was about 14 15 years old i was sleeping and I, in my dream, I saw myself there on the clouds. It's lots of thinking about that. And I want to tell you something. You know who I found there? I know that children, that I'm not in a good connection with them. I found them there. It's true what I'm saying. I was for a little bit in the silent and directly I say, I'll go to talk to them. I went, I saw the, all of them, they are smiling, they are playing. And I began to talk to them. They began to talk to me in love. I woke up. I say, tomorrow morning, I will go to talk to them because we are walking all of us uh, together to the school. I came to them. Good morning. How are you? And directly they look at me. What's going here? I say, you are great people. I love you all. And they smile. And we finish everything between us in a moment. Sometimes you need to get out of you to find the solution and to come to yourself. All of the people, they are great all around the world. As we say, we are not fighting the people. We are fighting the deed, the behavior with love, to fight with love. This is what we need to do. Shahabuddin, good morning. Sabah al khair. Sabah al nur. It's yours. Bokar Tov. Well, I want to uh, just repeat something that Sheikh Hassan said yesterday. Friday is going to be our last vigil for a while. And <clears throat> I, like everybody else, has so appreciated this and feel like, well, let's let it go on and on and on. But sometimes when you take a break, when you take a pause and you go within, it becomes even stronger. So I'm really hoping that when we take this pause, Friday will be the last day for, I don't know how long Ghassan and I are gonna be in Turkey until um, I think the 9th of December. But if, if we take this pause, it doesn't mean that any of us are now free to forget. Because we don't have this form 
more responsibility is on each of us as individuals to remember. And it's taken me a long, long time to realize that the hierarchical model is just one way. And what we're moving towards, hopefully, collectively as humanity, is a more horizontal model. So the teacher is going to be, is, not going to be, but is each one of us. The vigil is each one of us. The responsibility is each one of us. Now, it's going to be difficult not having Rasan come on every morning and tell us it's all about love and how he made uh, this wonderful connection with classmates in the clouds. But um, it's wise for us to step back a little and say, well, I'm not going to forget this because the outer is not happening now. And we think we do this naturally with people who die. We remember them, we miss them, but in time, the relationship changes. But actually, we never forget and they never forget. The connection is what's important. So I'm going to say every day for the next three days, please, when we stop, please, please remember and know that each one of us has enough. Dayenu, it's enough. We don't need more teaching. We don't need more meetings. We don't need more teachers. We have all of that within us. If our desire is for peace, then we are living within the greatest peacemaker, which is ourself. So, what can we do? We can remember to be kind. If we just do that, to be kind, to be grateful, to be prayerful, to be deep, the presence will be with us and will be not only as effective, but even more effective. But on the other hand, if you don't want to do this alone, invite your friends. Say, I want to meet every morning, or I want to meet every week, or every Tuesday, whatever. Invite your friends and say, let's, let's have a vigil for peace in the world. We need it. We really need it. So that's, that's my appeal. And if you want to make a donation, of, it's nice if you send money, but the great donation, send peace. Send peace to all of us. Keep it alive. Really keep it real. So one last thing, which is completely non-related outwardly, but Gassan and I and a few of our friends are going to Turkey next week. Uh, we have a little tour that starts the 26th. And somebody canceled, and I said I would try and see if anybody wants to go. If anybody's free and has a passport, let me know. <laughs> okay. Oh, I have the next job, don't I? Our, our speaker today is wonderful. Halima Zipporah Thea who has long, long experience working with nonprofits with the environment. And really nothing's more important than that right now. Um, we have an unusual relationship with the natural world, which seems very unnatural. We think we can control that which is beyond our control. And instead of being conscious, we be, seem to be becoming more unconscious. So, dear Zipporah, it's yours.
<laughs> Thank you and good morning. Um, I too wanna express my gratitude for this month, these mornings, as I have really traveled my own uneven path with um with the, with the conflict and um it, these have been it's been very healing and any healing we can do individually clearly has um has reverberating effects um i wanted to talk a little bit today and if you'll bear with me um i was listening this week to a colleague an author um terry tempest william she was giving the opening session at the Boston Book Festival, and she was introducing a session on the 50 year anniversary of the Endangered Species Act. And paraphrasing, I, I just wanted to say a little bit about what she said. She said that, well, some facts, some facts is that over 1400 species have been listed on our Endangered Species Act and that it has prevented the extinction of nearly 99% of those listed. She talks about the Endangered Species Act as an act of um, res restraint and respect for divine specificity. And she said, this act is deeper than hope. It's action as an act of love. She then paused for a moment and said that she wanted to mark that moment. And she said, this is what she said. We know that we are at war and we're all feeling it and its complexities. And I think as animals, as a species, if we are without empathy, especially in this time, we too are an endangered species. And she said, we can write a different ending if we live and love differently. And then if I, if you'll bear with me and I'd like to take you on a, a little, a little shared journey. You might want to close your eyes. And this is, this is called um, titled, there is no liminal space in the Arctic summer. There is no liminal space in the Arctic summer. All is illuminated as the sun circles low on the horizon, day and night, from spring to fall. I doze deep in a sleeping bag, a dark cocoon of my own making, where night is an illusion. From morning dream time, I am pulled from half slumber by this waking vision. 10,000 and more caribou. Mothers and newly born calves screeching their bonding to each other in an unending chatter. By their unique perfume too, each maternal pair are also learning to know the other for survival, protection, and their future. There's no rest for the babies. Within minutes, they are on their puppet legs. They need, the need of the herd to move is paramount to escape predators, some four-legged and millions more winged with bloodthirst. In the bright night of sleep, I also gaze into the low slung sun where the caribou silhouette against the edge of the earth. We, are enveloped within a murmuration of ungulates, continually moving, shifting, reforming. There is no liminal stillness in the Arctic summer. On this land, suspended in 19 million acres of wilderness, we float and paddle and navigate from the north side of the Brooks Range nearly 100 miles to the Arctic Ocean. Traveling through luminescent blue ice flows, cataracts of white water, passing tundra plants not yet green with spring, and thousands of miles of rain-logged permafrost. Amidst this treeless, unending landscape, nothing is hidden. There is no liminal light in the Arctic summer. 
From an ice encased tent, I crawl into the false and frigid morning. The solitary black wolf stands. We pause in the shared alone, inhaling the same wet breath. I hold mine. She watches. What must she be thinking of the strange two-legged creatures with their vibrant, unnaturally colored skins? No matter, unconcerned, she turns to her path, filled with a purpose known only to her. There is no liminal time in an Arctic summer. A silent wall of fog, ice fog, advances, enveloping the vast, mystifying, and braided river. Undifferentiation overtakes rafts, tents, willow ptarmigan bears, and silting, roiling water. Here, we could be lost completely in a different, darker interstitial space. With no shadow, liminal vision is unknown on the Arctic ice. There is no liminal space in the Arctic summer. There is only the deepest cellular belonging. The hardest part of leaving the Arctic summer is leaving the luminescence. Yet for a while, this is the work. To fulfill a promise, we must carry within us the places of love to make whole our splintered world. We come to live the between time, between space and light and stillness and vision, to keep a vow to carry the wild love of place and heart and home into brokenness. To fulfill this vow, we step into the liminal purposefully until we go back to the place of leaving. There is no liminal space. And I would just like to repeat what Terry said at the end of her introduction, which was, we can write a different ending if we live and love differently. Thank you. God bless you all for everything that you're doing. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Oh, Alima. It's, it's so deep. It's so beautiful. And really, you touched our inner side, all of our inner yeah. world yeah. inside. Thank you so much. God bless you. I would like to say once um, about what Shahuddin say. It's very important to remember and to be all the time in this. If you want to win, not the battle, the war, to win your love, you don't need, as, as I say once, if you want to win the war, you can. Don't enter to that war. Don't enter to the war. You will win the war. You will not lose anything. Once they asked me from uh, uh, Ramallah about some clash was between Israel and the Palestinians. If you will write something, I say, but don't tell me what to write as usual. I'll write mine. They say, yes. I didn't allow anyone to smell or smell of, to smell the weapons. And I didn't allow anyone to feel the fear I spoke about love and I spoke about connection and understanding and other many articles they came there. The highest uh, letters arrived to my article, not because the best written, no, because I didn't use anything pulling us for fight. The people understand that. And in other thing, I want to say that one day my cousin, he had a bird and he brought it to me because they know I will not hunt any bird, any animal, anything since I was a child. And they brought it to me and he gave me the bird. He said, look how this bird so beautiful. Put him on a cage, put it in a cage. I say, okay. 
And he say, take, I took the bird. I say, oh, you didn't hunt the bird. You hunted the picture of the bird. You will see. I put that bird inside the cage. We wait and wait and wait and wait. He didn't say anything. I say, you see, the essence of that bird flew away and give you the external shape of it a, 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 a being. In the night, I say, okay, I'll, I, I spoke with the uh, uh, bird. I say to him, listen, I will keep you tonight. I want to look at you. In the morning, I will free you. I'm so sorry for that, really. In the early morning, the birds wake up before us, walk up, and they hear the very, very beautiful songs from that bird. But it was kind of sad songs. I took him to the window. I opened. He looked at me and looked at the I said, get out, get out. When he got out, the songs changed to be very happy. I say, I'll keep you free. Shibli, our friend, our brother, our beautiful soul, human, it's yours. Shibli, you're muted. Okay, I'm good. Yeah. Okay. Let's, uh, let's do a little thing here. Sit straight and close your eyes, relax, and let your breath be a natural breath. Let it come in and out in a relaxed fashion. Now become aware of the stillness of your body as you're not moving and your body is still and relaxed. Now watch your mind. And if there's chatter, just allow it to quiet. Notice that there's uh, no reason to hold on to any chatter. And become aware that below the chatter, in the stillness is silence and that quiet is not silence silence underpins stillness be very aware of the silence
Now see the experience of the mind as though you were in the desert in a clear blue sky. And if there's any thoughts that arise, they dissipate and dissolve in the sky. And become aware of the spacious nature of this sky of mind. and relax into the spaciousness. May all beings be well. May all beings be happy. Peace, peace, peace. Om Hari Om. Om Hari Om. Thank you. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much, your soul. Thank you. And... Uh, from here, I will ask a young man to be with us. After that, the uh, great uh, teacher. But now I will ask uh, Abed. He is the director of the uh, uh, programs and projects of Abraham Curie Union in Israel. He's in Florida now, but I will invite him to say something. Abed, it's yours. Fadal, Bakasha. Thank you. Thank you, dear chef. And thank you. I would like to thank all of you for your beautiful support. And um, actually for the most beautiful number that daily we, how much you are care and, and how much love you have inside you to the Holy Land and for the human being. Uh, it's just actually I want to uh, I want to speak about a small and short report about the youth in the Holy Land. Um, and I need, I know that you are praying for us daily. And maybe we can add more little bit prayers, especially for the uh, peacemakers in the Holy Land right now, especially in this period. And the youth that we use to meet every month uh, but during all the situation now, we, we, I'm, I'm speaking like daily with all youth from the West Bank, Israel, North, South, and everywhere. Um, because they part of them, they are in the army, part of them, they are in Palestine, part of them, they, they divide a little bit. Um, but the most beautiful thing that I touched and I see that when they continue speaking to each other, even the Palestinians and the Israelis who participating in for, with the Abrahamic Union uh, programs, they continue speak to each other. Even they discuss. They discuss. Even they, when I say Palestinian and Israeli, they and and people they their backgrounds little bit. It's little bit broad problematics. People from East Jerusalem. People from from um, um, from settlements. They they talking to each other. After all that, there is hope. There is a huge hope. Most of the people they, they deny the war. They don't want war at all. They don't want to kill each other. They want to continue meet. They want to continue meet. And I think even you saw Devora who lost her son. She's she's fighting for peace. She's doing. She participating even in, in demonstration for peace to stop killing. Stop killing. Because they feel what they lose. 
the youth um, unfortunately they're part of the youth they they in in very bad situation uh, a psycholog- psychologically and and they 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 very sad for what they happen part they left part they stay but mostly most of the people who participate with us they still working for peace they still standing for peace they still raise the flag of peace and understanding after all i i hope you can send a special prayers for the peace young peacemakers in the whole land and i would like to thank you again for all of your support we still we still working very hard actually we we giving now 24 hours of meetings calling speaking all of us but me and Sheikh Hassan, all the time we we continuing creating these bridges or holding the whole bridges to to not break or fall and and we, we can do this alone with you actually it's with you with all your prayers with all your energy that you've given us thank you very much thank you very much thank you Ahmed. thank you very much by the way Abed, me, Shahbuddin, or Shahbuddin, uh, Chris, uh, all of the uh, board, we are aware for to create lots of uh, connection and peace with all of the people in the Holy Land and here, and we will continue. Uh, I think there's nothing to say. I, I, I don't have anything to say more, you know, except to send lots of love. All the time. I will go to Shahabuddin if you would like to say something or to pray. Shahabuddin, it's yours. I also have nothing to say. Um, just one last thing from me. My prayer is that the vigils will start again and continue, but not because of war not because of killing, not because of violence, but they'll continue because we've found a way to love each other and to expand that. We found a way to use our spiritual energy, our presence, our hearts, our souls. And by being together, something is happening. And I hope that we can find a way to restart the vigil, not based on violence and reaction to violent acts, but that we can restart it purely from a place of love and gratitude and protection. So thank you all really deeply. Thank you so much. Ah, one more thing. I want to thank Abed, who just spoke. He has, uh, I'm going to talk about you, Abed, and I didn't ask your permission, but I'm going to do it. He has really been in the midst of very difficult situations. I don't have to go into them. But he's suffered both bodily and, and in his depth from what he's been through. And one of the nice things that we're doing in this vigil is we're offering our healing, our love, our support to Abed, a young man who's seen much more than old people see in their whole life. So really, Abed, thank you from all of us. Thank you so much, Abuddin. Thank you, Abed. Thank you, Shibli. Thank you, Halima. One, one, one day in the beginning of the life in this earth, a one family came to the earth and they say, uh, we are so happy, suddenly they begin to miss the light. And suddenly they begin to feel something comes instead the light. They cannot see one another. And they hugged one another in the dark and say, come to be together. We don't know what will happen. It's a nature of the human being to protect her, herself, and the others. And they slept when they are hugging one another. They so, thought that they lo- lose or lost the light at all. Next day, 
The light rays again. They woke up, opened their eyes. Oh, here's the light. Come back. Maybe he lose the way and he come back here. But the same thing happened on the evening. What will happen? Where's the light? Again, they hug themselves. It's, and it's began to be tradition. It's a myth. It's began to be tradition to hug one another. But their day, they say, Okay, wait, wait, wait. Before the light will leave, we will catch the light. It will, it cannot leave. They catch from everywhere. What to catch? They don't know. They thought that they can keep it here in the earth. But the day went and the dark came. After two months, they began to think, we cannot keep the light all the time. This is the nature of the life, night and day. But instead to keep the day of the light of the day, we can create our light. We can do our light during the dark. And they began to do the light. But after one year, they say it's not enough. We need to do something. The smallest one, the child of that family, he say, I found the light. It's here. This is the light. Can light everything all around us. Because we don't need to see with this eyes only, with the eyes of the heart, and to hear with the ears of the heart. I love you so much. And inshallah, see you, Be'ezrat Hashem, see you tomorrow. Keep with us, because we are with you, and we are you. You are us. Don't forget to support us, praying, love, financial. Shalom, salam, peace. See you tomorrow.